day at a time Sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking from you Just give me the strength to do every day what I have start with some announcements. I know that there are several uh, ahead of, above us here. Um, board meeting at New Hope after, after their service today. Now tomorrow, if you want some cheap entertainment <laughs> and a lot of laughter, I'll welcome you to Liberty Pole Church Basement because the church basement quilters will be in session. Um, we start officially by 9.30, but usually it's about 9 o'clock, and, and uh, we die about 3 o'clock. <laughs> um, it probably will shorten by five minutes every year because we're aging, but we are having a fantastic time. We are doing a lot of things for ourselves, but also for others. So please, come, come for some cheap entertainment. Linnell and I will be there, so you know it's going to be good. Uh, <clears throat> Wednesday Warriors. Wednesday food pantry is open, Thursday food pantry is open, uh, next Sunday will be Bible study at Liberty Hall. So, boy, they're doing it two weeks in a row. 
we must be uh, in a little deficiency of the people. So. <laughs> um, I want to thank you for your support for um, our privilege at Liberty Pool of moving forward with our celebration of our 150th anniversary. We'll be coming up on June 30th. We are planning a single service at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, part of that is so that some of our prior pastors will be able to come and join us after their morning service. We hope they will come. Uh, we'll be following in our service up with a light lunch, and I understand some of you will be helping us serve. So um, we're going to kick off our coin collection. Um, we're hoping to, to gather a lot of coins. I know you had your pork chop meal last night. Manel. We did. And um, after expenses and everything, we cleared $781.33. That was just on the dinner. Then on the bake sale, um, $313. So I just want to take this minute to um, thank everybody for their hard work and those who just plain showed up. <laughs> <laughs> and the coffee pot's on after church. We can have some fellowship with uh, coffee and bars. Okay. I didn't buy all the bars. I bought some donuts. I bought some bars. <laughs> Are there any other announcements? Please join me in the prayer of preparation. We gather together to learn from the apostles' teachings, to care for one another, to pray for our loving God, and to have communion with Christ. May our worship be a witness to the word of God's grace. Amen. You stand and join me in singing hymn number 131, We Gather Together. Our opening prayer. 
Thank you, Tom. O living God of past and future, we praise you for this present moment. Fill us with your joy and empower us with your Holy Spirit that our strength may be renewed to sing a new song of your glory in a world which longs for your justice and peace. All this we ask in the name of Jesus, in whom we become your new creation. Amen. You may be seated. The scripture reading I've chosen today comes from the book of Acts. And this is the third Sunday of Easter. Uh, we're, we're moving on. Jesus has risen. We are moving forward. We are becoming the church. Acts. I tried to tell him that I was in Acts 2, verses 42 to 47, and Pastor Drew texted me back and said, um, those verses don't exist in that chapter. And I said, oh, I'm off to a good start. Aren't I? So, <laughs> let me share with you from Acts 3, verses 42 through 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone he had, who was in need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. What's in your future? Now, if that sounds a little bit like well, what's in your wallet from a Capital One commercial, um, sometimes I get some ideas from that silly TV. You know, Wayne and I look at each other and say, why don't we just turn it off? And it just becomes background and we listen to it. But what's in your future? And this is really to us as individuals, but it's also to us as a church and to us as the Driftless Ministry. You know, we started a journey as the Driftless Ministry a few years ago. The journey actually began a long, long time ago for each one of us. Um, and as I stated, Liberty Pole is celebrating 150 years. I don't know how many years retreat has been here. So can somebody help me out? Wayne asked me, and I couldn't answer that question. About the same time. I thought so. I thought so. So we'll be helping you when that time comes. Um, and Southwest Prairie is 150 years this summer. So we have been as churches for a long time. But that's a small time in the grand scheme of things. But what is our future? As a church? As each other? We hear in, in the book of Acts where I read to you that people are going out. They're having fellowship. And fellowship is such an important part of our churches, our families, our friends, our neighborhoods. So many gatherings that we have uh, do involve having some fellowship. <coughs> now as individuals, the future is different at different ages and stages in our life. You know, you, you think of the three-year-old, oh, I can't wait to go to school. 
you know, because my big brother is in school or whatever. So his future is very simplistic. Um, but he can't wait till he goes to school or she. And then the kids get in school and they're looking forward and looking forward. And we're at a time now where um, we're publishing in, in the newspaper and on Facebook and things the graduates' future plans. What's in your future? Now, some are going to enter the workforce, some are going on to college, occasionally there's some going into the military, and some are undecided. And you know what? That's okay. That's okay. Um, go to college. Oh, I can't wait to get to college. You know, that's in my future, and I can't, oh, I just can't wait. Well, then you get to get a job. And therein lies the rub sometimes, is that can dictate your whole future. What is your job? Now, each one of us has a job. Our job is to teach and to lead and to bring others to Christ. Did you know that was your job? Mm -hmm. Now, John shared something with me this morning as part of your church's mission work. And each one of our churches does have a mission work. And that's part of what we need to do as Christians. We need to share with others and to grow and to bring others to us. Then there's looking forward to marriage and family. You know, that's down the road and it's in the future for people. And those things come. And then after you've raised your kids and things are going well and you're in your job and you're working well, there's retirement is in your future. And I'll tell you folks, I highly recommend it. You know, it's, it's a one size fits all, it, it's expandable, it shrinks, it, it, it's just wonderful. I speak from experience, but I've done all those things as a human being. I don't know how well I've done to help bring others to see Jesus. That will be determined at some other time. Because the ultimate in our future, I hope for all of us, is that trip to heaven. Now, some of us have a shorter future than others in this room because we're of diverse ages. But we all have gifts. We all have things that we can share. We all have things that we can do. We all have ways we can reach out to others. <clears throat> um, what, is it, what does it take? What does it take to secure our future? I want to share some words from the book of Jeremiah, uh, chapter 29, verses 21. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be bound by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and place where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carry you into exile. Hope. There's hope for our future. That was forecast and predicted so many years ago. And it keeps us going today. It's what keeps that little boy who's looking forward to going to school, like his big brother does. It's a hope for that high school kid that's waiting to get their driver's license and then their hope that they get their own car. It's the hope of a secure future when you find your mate that you want to marry and spend the rest of your life with. It's the hope of parents as we raise our children that they will become good, meaningful, productive, God-fearing, God-serving adults. There's hope for us. There's hope for us as we continue to learn and to grow and to study and to reach out to each other and to our communities and to use the resources that we have. Now the Lord has given each one of us a set of knowledge, skills, and abilities 
Sometimes we use them well, eh, sometimes maybe not quite so well. But we can. We are the future. There's a whole lot more past for me than there is future for me. But I still have a lot of, to offer, I hope. What does it take? It takes thought. It takes planning. It takes evaluation and reevaluation. It takes commitment. And there are some stumbling blocks as we plan for our future. Now, for Wayne and I, one of the things that we talked about before we were even married, almost 58 years ago, and the numbers blur, one of the things we wanted to do was to go south in the winter and get out of part of the cold winter in Wisconsin. We'd both been born and raised in Wisconsin. We knew what it was like. Um, but that was kind of a glib, just kind of conversational plan. And yeah, you know, it's going to happen. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. We just periodically talked about it. We also raised our kids so that they could go and be and do whatever they wanted, wherever they wanted. I didn't realize that we were program programming one to live in Arizona <laughs> <laughs> and give us our winter place. <laughs> so, but it's the planning and kinds of things that we do for our future. And then we have to identify what are some of the stumbling blocks. There's always money. You know, everything costs something financially. Health. Ill health doesn't fit into our future plans very well. But it's there. And we have to deal with it. The Lord will help us through it. Oh, and then there's worry. Oh my gosh, I don't know how is that going to happen. I don't think I can ever do that. And, you know, I'm not good enough. I don't have this. I don't have that. I, I just... I don't think that can ever happen. No, 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 no. Well, if you read some words in Matthew chapter 7, starting with verse 25, these are some of my favorite words. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. Now this is Jesus talking directly to us. Do not worry about your life what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet our Heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you by worrying can add a single day to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or sin. <coughs> Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we wear, or what shall we drink? For the pagans reign after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I think that is so true. But we tend to get caught up in that worry about our future. Oh, you know, and now we are in a position where we are seeking a pastor. Oh, are they going to pick us? Are we going to be good enough? What if they don't like it here? What if the parsonage isn't great? Oh, three churches? And then they're going to tear up the road out here. So that's part of your future, folks. It's an immediate future. So how are you going to get from here to there? God has a plan. We just have to be willing to listen and hear and obey. And that's not always easy. We need to share our talents. We need to provide a foundation for our children and our grandchildren and our neighbors. 
We need to lead by example. Show them what it's like to live a Christian life. I'm hopeful for the future of our church. We had an ad hoc committee meeting on Sunday, last Sunday evening, and we had a lot of discussion. And one of the things that came through is there are times when we don't have quite as much hope. We don't see the pews here on Sunday morning full like we used to. We just, we need to go back and listen to God and we need to renew that hope. I hope my children will do well. And they do. They do. I hope for a good job. And many of us have had those. Right now I'm hoping for a good calving season and it hasn't gotten off to the best, but I'm hopeful for the future. If we didn't have hope for the future, we couldn't keep going. So I'm hopeful for us as individuals. We have our belief. Let's remain committed. Let's re be reassured and figure out how can you help yourself and others face the future. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you have given to us where we can share with others, where we can continue to learn and grow and become better Christians on a regular basis. Help us, Lord, to overcome some of the obstacles that are in front of us as we face the future of ourselves as individuals and our growth as a church. We pray, Lord, that you will be looking after all of those who are unable to come today for whatever reasons and help them to understand that the fellowship of being with other Christians is of vital importance to their lives. Help us, Lord, to be good examples, to continue to lead people to you, and help us to proceed in the words that you taught us to pray. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. comes in, hands her cane off, and she's walking around without putting the cane. But she's got to have this boot down there, up, up, way up on the leg. But I thought that was progress. <laughs> 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 
Oh, it was good. I was excited. Wow. It is exciting. It's it's baby steps. Yeah. She has a future, a future of healing that, so she can get out of that boot. But she's come a long way so far. But it's taken a year or better. And, but she's gonna make it. Good for her. Good for her. Prayer helps. But now, prayers for um, Leah Meyer. She's going through a some rough patches, and that's Sarah and Junior Hanson's granddaughter. So just prayers. Wow. Charlie and Debbie and family. Mm -hmm. And for a successful pork chop dinner last night. Lots of hard work, but appreciate it all. We'll be praying for Bill. Uh, he underwent successful back surgery this week, Bill Morrell from Liberty Pole. Mm -hmm. um, having some discomfort is to be expected. So he'll be on the road to recovery. What are the hardest things, Carol, for your granddaughter, for Bill, for anybody, is to be a patient patient. Um, we are not long on patience as humans in this world. And, and uh, you know, I'm sure that Tom probably had some times when he might not have been. Then, still. <laughs> <laughs> patience, you know, that's something we need to pray for once we <coughs> extend my patience a little bit. You should be thankful, too, for the health care people that are busy taking care of us and have the knowledge. And the interest and the care to take care of us in our medical needs too. Jordan, me, Marla, Charlie, and Debbie, everybody. Marla. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, well, we have kind of a big refurbishing going on here, and I think this week is going to be a big time to get painting and such done, so lifting up all of that project and all that needs to be done with it. It's a blessing we're able to do it, but yes. you know. We are, we are graced with beautiful church buildings in our Driftless Ministry. And we've had the abilities, you know, both financially and work-wise, to maintain our buildings. To, to keep them so that they do retain their beauty. Um, there's nothing like having the sun come through these beautiful, beautiful windows in, in all of our churches. There's just something awe-inspiring there. Jeff? I believe Angie and Ryan have an anniversary this week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember for a Married 20. Older married 20. 20 20 years. <laughs> it's quite an accomplishment. Wait to get to 56. <laughs> okay. Keep it up. And Angie, thank you for your work. And Jeff and I know Crystal on the pastoral search team. I, you've worked very hard. And we really do appreciate it. And we appreciate it by not asking questions. <laughs> oh, yeah, thank, you, thank you for everyone's patience while we do it. <laughs> we knew it wouldn't happen. Good things overnight. take time. We're working towards our future. Okay, let's go to Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, you've heard the names who have been lifted up to you today. We pray for your blessings. We can continue to be so appreciative of health care people that can care for people like Tom and Marla. We bring Charlie and Debbie and their family to the forefront. Carol's granddaughter, who's able to go without a cane, even though she still needs a boot. We pray for Bill as he recovers from his back surgery. Leah Meyer, as she goes through some rough patches in life. Lord, we never know exactly what you're going to put in front of us, but we know that you have a plan for us, and you will take care of us. It's up to us to be willing to accept that and continue to be able to continue to learn and grow. 
and being able to share with others. We thank you for the positives, anniversaries, the church work that's going on, the successful dinner that was held here last night. We pray, Lord, that we will be able to continue to see what the future holds for our church. I pray special blessings for our pastoral search team who has been so diligent about finding that special person for us. We know you know who that person is and we'll bring them to us. Bless us with some extended patience, Lord, so that we can celebrate when that person comes to join our congregations. We thank you for all that you have given us. And we pray that we will continue to give to you. Amen. Will you stand and join me in singing Here I Am, Lord, 593. <coughs>
And now go in peace, friends. Listen to the Lord. And when he says, it's your time, come and follow me. Let's follow him. Let's bring more here. Go in peace. <coughs> Thank you.